cool figure, but gun holsters on action figures with the guns molded in place and are non-removable just annoy me. It looks strange when you put guns in your figure's hands, but then they also have the guns still in their holsters. So where did they pull these new guns out of? Maybe it's best not to think too much about that. So here's my solution, a removable fabric shoulder holster that can store the guns. The materials you'll need for this project are fabric. I'm using a poly suede fabric I got from Hobby Lobby, and this is the same fabric I used to make quivers earlier this year. Or was it last year? Sometime in the past. Scissors, ruler, fabric marking pencil, or some way to mark dark fabric so you can see your lines, needle and thread, or fabric glue, and a compass. Links to some of those materials will be in the video description. I want to start by cutting and measuring a piece of fabric that is about, looks like three millimeters wide, and about nine centimeters long. Now this is going to become the strap that goes on the back of your figure. Now for the part that actually goes around the shoulders, originally I was thinking, well, we can use some more straps and strips of fabric to just go around like that. But I've discovered it actually works better if we cut a circle instead. So here's a circle. You slip that over the bicep and up over the shoulder. And see how that just fits much more nicely? To make the circle, I use my compass and I set it so that the tip of the pencil and the tip of the compass are 0.8 centimeters apart. And I'm going to make a mark on my fabric so I know where my central point is and then use the compass to draw a circle. You want to make sure that you're drawing your circle on the bad side of the fabric. So this will be on the inside of the figure and not showing up. Okay, so there's our first circle. Now we need to make another circle. So take your compass again, and we're gonna spread the tines apart a little bit. And this time we're gonna make a circle with a diameter of 1.1 centimeters. And I set the compass on that same mark and sketch this circle. Oops, sketch the circle, come on. Around the outside. Pencil's not cooperating today. <laughs> Okay, now we have two circles drawn, so take your scissors and cut out the outer circle. And then you want to cut out the inner circle, so I'm just going to make a couple cuts here to make it easier to get my scissors in there. I'm just going to even this up a little bit. Next, you want to make sure that your circle will fit over your character's bicep and shoulder. And that one actually fits pretty good. Usually, you have to trim a little bit more out of the middle of them. Okay, and then once you get that on, you want to cut a second one. If they're too tight, you could always trim out a little bit more from the middle or just cut a new circle. You want them to be a little bit on the tight side though, so that they sit a little better. Um, let me give you an example. If they're a little loose, like this one here is a little too loose, so I ended up cutting it again. I'll show you how it doesn't sit as well as compared to the other side. Okay, you see how it's kind of standing out here? If I can get my camera in focus. Okay, you see how it's kind of standing out here and not sitting tightly against the shoulder and chest? That's what happens if it's a little too loose. So that's why I ended up just cutting another one. So once you have your two rings that you're happy with, you take that strip of fabric that you cut earlier, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip it underneath both of these rings, and then we're gonna sew it. So to do that, we need to take the rings off the figure. I'm gonna put the fabric inside the ring and fold it over so that just a little bit is past the ring, like so. And then I'm going to sew this portion right here with a couple of stitches to keep it closed. If you don't know how to sew, you could always use some glue. Or if you want to learn how to sew, you can always check out my video on how to sew miniature pillows and blankets. It's a pretty useful skill to have. Okay, so what we have so far is a ring 
with a strip of fabric on it and this ring can rotate along the strip if you wanted to. Now we need to put this back on the figure so we know how far out to sew the other ring. I'm just going to make a, a mark on the back side of the fabric so I know about where to sew the ring. And before you actually start sewing this second ring on, that you put this harness on your figure to make sure that it will actually fit, that you're leaving enough room. Okay, I think that's actually good. So if you line up your pencil line right where the crevice where the shoulder meets the back, that's a pretty good starting spot. And then I just sew on the second ring. And then I just cut off the excess fabric. I'm just going to double check one more time that the straps will actually fit on the figure before I move forward. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. You want them to be a little bit loose in here just so they can have room in order to get it off your figure. Unless you have somebody like Spider-Man with a butterfly armpit joint. Those are always nice. Okay, next we're going to make the holsters for the gun and they are just a simple little fabric sheath that the gun fits in and we will eventually sew them to the harness and we can either sew them like that so that they're in the armpits or a little bit more forward. Looking online it looks like there's different ways of wearing your guns. I'm not sure what's best for what situation but maybe somebody in the comments will know. My knowledge of guns is pretty much limited to shooting a BB gun at some empty pop cans. To make the holster itself, I just kind of take some fabric and I fold it over the gun and have the handle sticking out like so. I just kind of mark it with my pencil. I leave a little bit of room along the edge though so I have some room to sew. So I can see like right here is the tip of the gun, so I'm going to go out a little bit further. And then I just cut out that shape, actually what the pattern looks like for my first holster. You can see it just kind of folds over like that and I will share those measurements with you. Now to make sure that both my holsters are the same size, I'm just going to trace my pattern from the first one. Obviously, you know, depending on what guns you're wanting to use with your figure, you may have to make your holster a different size to make sure it fits. So that's why I shared how I made the first one. We're going to be sewing this holster, but you know, once again, if you don't know how, how to sew or you just refuse to learn, you can try gluing this, but I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when I glue stuff, it never turns out looking as nice. Maybe you have better luck though. Okay, to actually sew this, we want a, the good side to be on the inside, and then we just fold it in half, like so. And then this wide part over here, you can see it's a little bit wider than this other end. That's going to be where the gun goes inside, if that makes any sense. The handle's going to stick out there, so that's why it's wider. And so it fits like that. So that means we need to sew along this top edge and then along this side here. And to help hold this in place, I'm just going to use a paper clip, paper binder clip right here. And then I'm going to start sewing. The reason we are sewing with the bad side of the fabric on the outside is because we're going to flip this inside out. That way to help hide these seams. This is actually like, geez, the third project I've started this week. <laughs> the first two didn't turn out right. That's the way it works sometimes. You just gotta keep trying until you come up with something that works. But I know it's frustrating when you get picture something in your head and then when you actually go to make it, it looks nothing like it. Like this one. This here, for example, this was something I was working on earlier this week and it just ended up being a lump of melted plastic. <laughs> it was supposed to be a trident for Namor. <laughs> hmm. I'll come back to that some other time. I was hoping to make it out of plastic so that way it would remain flexible, but I think I may have to just break down and try using some clay. I'm wondering if my microphone is picking up my bird in the background. He's in a completely different room of the house right now, but he can hear me talking. And so he knows I'm home and he's mad because I'm not in the room with him. 
But if I bring him in here, he's just gonna go crazy. He'll be over, overly excited and you guys won't be able to hear me talking. So my advice, if you want to start a YouTube channel, don't own a bird. <laughs> okay, now I have that sewn. And to turn it inside out, I'm going to use a paintbrush handle to help me. This is probably the trickiest part of this project, trying to turn this little tiny thing inside out without ripping it. Once you get it started, though, it's not so bad. Maybe I'll try a thinner brush. I finally got it inside out, so I'm just going to test it with one of the guns to make sure it fits in there. And for some reason, this fabric is just kind of getting all over the place. <laughs> Alright, so that fits pretty good. Not as nice as the first one, but, well, it happens sometimes. Next, I'm going to attach the holsters to the shoulder harness by sewing the, the holster to the ring. Now, here's where the seam of my holster is, and I'm going to use that as the bottom part of the holster. So I want to sew this top section here to the bottom of the ring. And for this, you want to make sure that you have the good side of your ring facing up and then the seam of the holster down at the bottom. And I'm just putting a couple stitches here, just enough to hold it to place, like maybe three or four. And then I'm going to repeat this process on the other side. It doesn't really matter too much where on your ring you sew the, the holster because the ring will rotate along your band. So if you don't like the position, you can always move it later. So that's the completed holster. But before you go, I have some photos to share from viewers like you who gave my previous projects a try. First up is Chris from Instagram, who put his own spin on my firewall guide to make an effect for his Dragon Ball Z figure. Then DCW Customs on Instagram used the wire technique from my cape guide to make his Punisher's coat posable. Draven on Twitter has been busy because he made both the firewall and the bookcase. Rave719 sent me these pics on Facebook, and he said that the technique from my firewall video helped him make a psychic blade for Psylocke. Finally, Steve on Instagram sent me this picture of his custom venom tendrils he made. Great job, everyone, and thanks for sharing your photos. If you want to make any of these projects, check out my Crafting for Action Figures and Other Toys playlist for the instructions. Also, if you've given any of my crafts a try, I'd love to see your photos too. Well, photos of your crafts. Not that I don't want to see photos of you, but that would be opening a whole other door because I don't want to see a bunch of pictures of... I should probably just stop there. Send me photos of your crafts and customs. If you'd like to share them, you could just post a link in the comments below or send them to me on social networking sites. And that's it for today, but I hope to see you all later, and thanks for watching.